Today on Discover Wisconsin, nearly 100 years of history. And there is your dagger. Over a dozen world championships and one of the most dedicated fan bases in the world. Welcome to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem for those who look for more and never say they've seen it all. Mariah, I've spent a lot of time here as a sportscaster, but I think my favorite memory as a fan in 1994 against a playoff game against the Lions, got to bring my grandfather here for the very first time. Yeah, nice, and for me it was all about cheering on the green and gold every Sunday, <laughs> losing our voices, screaming at the TV. Thanks for that, Brett Favre. But you're like most Wisconsinites, I think. Most of them are Packer fans. Yes, and today we're going to meet a few of those devoted cheeseheads, and we're going to learn about some of the Packers activities you can do on your Green Bay getaway. Green Bay is the third largest city in Wisconsin, and here, the Packers' pride is everywhere you look, from the stadium to the street signs. For many people, being a Packers fan isn't just a pastime, it's a way of life. I've been a Packer fan since the earliest I can remember is 1958, so a few years. Meet the Wittoon family. They became season ticket holders in 1963, and immediately a family tradition was born. My mom and dad's house is a half a block from Lambeau, and on game day, my uncles and my cousins would come over there, and mom's house became Grand Central Station in the early years. Grandma just made food for everybody, and. Anybody was welcome before or after the game. Sunday afternoons at noon, you're watching the Packer game. And that's it, whether they were good or they were bad, it was just kind of church, Packers, and that's kind of what it was. For the Wittoons, growing up in Green Bay meant the Packers were part of daily life. They were part of the community, and we had one time where my brother and I were waiting for the bus to go downtown, and Bart Starr, who lived a couple blocks away, came driving up, and they said, hey, where are you guys going? And we say downtown, he said, well, I'll jump in, let's go. It was, it was that way, you know, that, and it, that wasn't unique. I'm sure Bart Starr did that many times. The Wittoons bought a gas station in the shadow of Lambeau Field, where excited fans could park their cars and tailgate before every home game. That was cool because you got to meet all sorts of people. And what started out as being parents and or grandparents, at, over the years it became their kids that would come in. And then you saw the generations coming through and we became very, very close friends. After 43 years, the Wittoon sold the station in 2014, but they still remain avid Packers fans. It's just ingrained, it's like family. They're doing bad or doing good, it's just, it will drive you nuts, but you still love them. The Packers are a fabric We're of, of the whole city and state. Uh, it, it's, you, you can't even separate it. The Packers have always made you feel special. Few events truly show that special connection between the fans and their team than Packers Family Night. We're from Philadelphia, but we try to make it to Family Night every year. And this is something that we can pass on, keep passing down generation after generation. It's a good thing to have uh, you know, this experience here at Lambeau Field. The kids enjoy coming to Lambeau at a reasonable price and they get to see the players and they really just enjoy it. Fans can tailgate before heading into Lambeau to watch the Packers run drills and play in a scrimmage. The energy and excitement of the crowd makes it hard to tell you're not at a real game. The night ends with a spectacular fireworks show and of course, lots of happy Packers fans. Learn more about Packers Family Night at discoverwisconsin.com. Coming up, Mariah and I check out Lambo's newest restaurant, and later we meet up with a Packers Super Bowl champion. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Green Bay Getaway, right here on Discover Wisconsin. 
If you can't make it to family night, no worries. Another tried and true Green Bay tradition that's great for the whole family, Packers training camp. Does it ever surprise you guys how many people show up? I mean, we're talking practice, right? Really get a feel of how many Packer fans are out there. And it's, it's makes you want to come back. The side of the family has started the tradition in our family and we came up with them three years ago and we just kind of fell in love with it. It's like a family getaway extended weekend and we uh, continue to do it. We're gonna continue to come up every year. For years I've been doing this as a sportscaster, but uh, to watch it as a fan, this is awesome. This is my first time at training camp. I've never been here before, and it's like a What's the most fun about this? Will be this close to the players, or what? What yeah, exactly? It's the you know, it's, feel of the place. Yeah, the feel okay. of the fans. It's so football mecca. All right, you have to show off where you're from here at training camp. I have to represent my hometown, Evansville. Right there. Go Pack! Go! Get it! Go Pack! Go! Go Pack! Go! Go Pack! Go! Fans flock to Green Bay to catch a glimpse of this year's team and maybe even get an autograph from their favorite players. Who's your favorite Packer? Who's your favorite Packer? And kids, don't forget your bike. You never know who might want to borrow it on their way to practice. Have a favorite Packers training camp memory? Share it with us on Twitter right now using the hashtag DiscoverWisconsin. After all the excitement at training camp, stop by 1919 Kitchen and Tap, located right in the Lambeau Field atrium for a bite to eat. 1919 was named after the year that Earl Curley Lambeau and George Calhoun organized the Packers. We want people to come here any day, so during games, after games, during training camp, because we want people to come and feel the nostalgia, to understand the roots of 1919 and understand how it reflects where everything started. Are you as hungry as I am? I'm definitely there, no <laughs> question. Oh, look at this. Hi. Ooh, uh, what is this? Served by the chef himself. Oh, look at this. So for today, I got you uh, apple salad. It's a little bit of Napa cabbage and a cider vinaigrette with some goat cheese and some crisp chicken skins. That's and great. here is the uh, mushroom crusted burger. It's uh, got alpha mayo, a little bit of arugula, gorgonzola cheese, and some uh, chips on the side. Yum. And when you're talking about everything here at 1919, I mean, you're talking local ingredients, everything from around the area, right? Yeah, a lot of our produce and our cheeses are all coming from Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm ready to dive in. All right, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm, juicy. That is perfection. <laughs> mm, I gotta try the salad. Mm -hmm. It's a little sweeter than I thought it would be. It's really good. It's delicious. Hopefully you guys left some room for dessert. Oh, goodness. Oh, I always leave room for dessert. <laughs> That's our uh, peanut butter bread pudding, a uh, little bit of graham cracker crumble, creme anglaise, and uh, Guinness ice cream. Learn more about 1919's delicious menu at discoverwisconsin.com. When we come back, Mariah and I are learning all about the history of the green and gold. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Green Bay, right here on Discover Wisconsin. From humble beginnings to world championships, there's so much Packers history right here in the city of Green Bay. Now we can't show everything in one episode, but that we can show you quite a bit along the Packers Heritage Trail. The Packers Heritage Trail takes you to historical sites in downtown Green Bay that detail the history of the Packers throughout the Lambeau and Lombardi eras. You can tackle the trail yourself on a self-guided walking tour, or you can ride it in style on a Segway. Hi. Hey, Al. Hi, Mariah and Jake. Hi. Hey, welcome to Green Bay and the Packer Heritage Trail. Thank you. All right, well, this is an awesome tour. The majority of the tour that we go on is about a four by six block area downtown Green Bay. We're excited. This will be fun. Let's right, do it. Let's yeah. do it. All right. All right, this is the Columbus Community Club. And uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. First of all, are you guys going to any away games this year? I wish. I'd love to try, but. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah, any, any place on the road with the Packers is a good place, but me, I'm gonna be watching it on TV. But before TV, what did you do? Well, if you're a Green Bay resident, you're gonna come right here. We're talking early 1920s. And they had a guy here with a wire, right? So they had a telegraph service. And whoever was at the game would, would wire in play by play. Somebody here would write down the play as it occurred, read it to the crowds of people out here, and then he would post it on a football field uh, shaped sign up here. That's crazy. So they were diehard fans back then too, despite not having TVs and radios and all Exactly. That. Yeah, followed them all over. And if they couldn't be there, they came down and, and got play by play. Hi, this is the Chicago Northwestern Depot. When the Packers started in 1919, you know, they were doing away games. A lot of fans always would uh, have a party before they leave and also welcome them back into town. So it was always a really a lot of, a lot of fans. There's some wild parties thrown there, huh? Very much so, very much so. <laughs> Another real highlight of this, of this stop was in 1929 when they beat the Chicago Bears. There were over 20,000 people on the rooftops down here, you know, in the alleys, just welcoming your team back. The Packers Heritage Trail includes a few spots that aren't on the Segway Tour, but are well worth a visit, like Curly Lambeau's childhood home and City Stadium, the Packers' home from 1925 to 1956. No matter which sites you choose to visit, make sure to stop by one in particular. Oh, this is cool. I got a picture of this, huh? Yeah, this is the Packer Heritage Trail Plaza. Uh, this was done the year after the regular trail was done as a tribute to the Packers. There's a lot of things to read about, a lot of good photographs. And you know, then again, you know, some of the some of the star players that the Packers have had over the years. This guy is Bart Starr. The big star. The big one, you bet. When Bart came to Green Bay, his first game was actually the last game that they ever played at City Stadium before they moved out to New City Stadium, which is now Lambeau. And this is George Calhoun. George Calhoun was the editor for the Green Bay Press Gazette in 1919. And uh, he met with Curly Lambeau and they formed the Green Bay Packers. He always had his hat off at the games and he was passing the hat because nobody really owned the Packers. It wasn't a big corporate uh, sponsor. So he would pass the hat at games to try to get donations from people. Want more Packers history? Take a stroll along the Oneida Nation Walk of Legends. The Walk of Legends is a mile-long walkway east of Lambeau Field that features 24 monuments dedicated to the history and heritage of the Green Bay Packers. We have uh, many of the great characters in Packers history and leaders and legends in Packers history. The Oneida Nation came on as the sponsor of the Oneida Nation Walk of Legends to call attention to their heritage and their intertwined heritage with the Packers. Many of the Oneida tribal men played football and many of those players brought the game to Green Bay when it was in its infancy. So they really led to the proliferation of the town teams that led to the Green Bay Packers. Learn more about the Walk of Legends, plus find a full itinerary of all things Packers at discoverwisconsin.com. When we come back, we're exploring the hallowed halls of Lambeau with a special guest. We'll be right back. We're wrapping up our Green Bay journey right here on Discover Wisconsin. Whether you're here on game day or just visiting during the off season, no trip to Green Bay is complete without a stop at Lambeau Field. Lambeau Field was built in 1957. They built the stadium in less than nine months and it's seated 32,000 people. Once the Packers started winning in the Lombardi years, it was expanded. It was expanded several times and then redeveloped in 2003. But since the development and the uh, construction of the atrium, it is a 365 day a year destination. Even more improvements were completed in 2015, including the brand new Packers Hall of Fame. Fans can relive their favorite games, hear from Packers legends, and even see a replica of Vince Lombardi's office. One thing about the Packers is a team with a great tradition, a great and a wonderful tradition. That tradition, or that whatever you want to call it, that glory that is the Packers, has been developed for one thing only, and that's pride. Visitors can also get a peek at some behind-the-scenes areas of Lambeau on one of the daily tours through the stadium. 
Jake and I wanted to take a tour of Lambeau Field, and we thought, who better to join us than a former Packers player? You know, I like the way you think, Mariah. How about someone from Super Bowl 31, Ooh. the champion team, huh? I hey. like that even better. We got Chris How you Jack doing, guys? Yeah. Welcome to Lambeau Field. Chris Jackie, the former kicker. How you doing? I'm doing great. So I'm just back here visiting, you know, where I started my career. Your former home. My former home. We're going to see how different it looks now, right? Yeah. Yep, you hear a lot of great stories of what the men that walked on that field and played on that field in front of the best fans in the world. Oh. I'm excited. Let's do it. All right, let's go, shall we? Welcome to Lambeau Field, everybody. We are your tour guides. My name is Tom, and this is Candy right here. We're going to take you up to private suite on level four. Wow, look at that. My family would have liked this when I played. We have 188 private suites here at Lambeau Field. There is a quite a long waiting list for tickets. Right now, there are over 115,000 names on the waiting list for season tickets. This is a special area right here. These concrete slabs were moved here when that big renovation of Lambeau Field took place. What they did is they cut three slabs of the floor of the old tunnel up on the north end of the state and moved them down here to the new tunnel. And that was done because the organization wanted to point out to each and every player that plays with the Green Bay Packers. They have a lot of tradition to live up to. A lot of people that have built the tradition. On the day of a game, Team comes down the hallway, down the ramp, through the tunnel. So come on this way. Wow, this uh, is it. This Maybe. brings back memories. Does it? Oh, it does, quite huh? a bit. So now I gotta ask Chris, what's your favorite memory of being on here? There's just so many memories that we, that we had, you know, after we won the championship game to go to the Super Bowl out there in the middle with everybody and just having a great time with the fans and the players and I'm, I'm getting chills now just thinking about it. What do you both, I guess, think about the, just the fan culture here at the Packers, here in Green Bay? Uh, it's unbelievable. You know, when we played, it didn't matter if we were playing here at Lambeau Field in front of 60,000 people or down in Tampa Bay. We have fans everywhere. It doesn't, it's just not Wisconsin. It's, it's the entire nation and really the world now. Um, the Packers are a phenomenon. They really are. We've had people on these tours from over 125 different countries. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had people on the tours from all all the states, so people come here from all over. And yeah. when people come out the tunnel here, a lot of times they have tears coming down. Really? So, now that really gives me chills. Tears or chills, yeah. or it's, yeah. I got chills now just thinking about, you yeah, know, reliving some you of know the Reggie Whites and oh. the Brett Favre's and mm -hmm. Sterling Sharps, Makowski's, just the yeah. names that have walked through these doors or these tunnels on either end. It's, it's just amazing to think about. All and we're them. standing with one. And, uh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, thank you. Watch more of our tour with Chris Jackie, plus see behind the scenes photos from our time in Green Bay at discoverwisconsin.com. Whether you're a lifelong Packers fan or a brand new cheese head, you can never have too much Packers gear. After your tour, make sure you stop by the Packers Pro Shop where you can pick up your favorite player's jersey and even a few unusual items. Every Packers fan can find whatever they're looking for here at the Packers Pro Shop. In 2014, we expanded our pro shop. We were about 7,500 square feet and we've grown to 21,000 square feet. I think really, you know, the experience of coming to the pro shop is coming to, the, to Lambeau Field. And it's really getting the full experience. It's a wow moment for so many people. And we still carry on the tradition of Lambeau and we have all the historical value still placed within us. Jake, I'm not sure we're donning enough green and gold right now. What do you mean, Mariah? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Pretty subtle, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll tell you what, if you haven't been to Lambeau Field, one trip here, you'll be donning cheese heads, whatever else. Yes, yeah. one experience, that's what it's all about, falling in love with the Green Bay Packers. It's Pretty a, amazing. It's a blast. <laughs> well, I'm Jake Zimmerman. And I'm Mariah Haberman. We'll see you next week on Discover Wisconsin. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. For more information and bonus video from this episode, go to discoverwisconsin.com. And don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discover Wisconsin Radio all across the state.